Here's a teenage quiz for you. How do you know if someone likes you? Maybe quick glances in the classroom or some cheesy one-liners. Well, geopolitics is quite similar. Countries have their own way of saying they like you, their own love language, if you will. And for China, that's panda diplomacy. I'm talking about pandas, these guys, giant pandas. They're the rarest members of the bear family. You can find them only in China. If you see them in zoos abroad, China gifted it to them. It's Beijing's way of reaching out. But the last few, in the last few years, panda diplomacy has struggled because China began pulling them out from the U.S. Zoos in Memphis, Tennessee, and Washington had to return their pandas. And why was that? Again, geopolitics. China-U.S. Competi competition intensified in the last few years, especially after the 2018 trade war. So Beijing took the pandas back. Then why are we talking about them tonight? Because panda diplomacy is making a comeback. China is working to send two of them to the San Diego Zoo. As far as I know, relevant Chinese institutions have already signed agreements with Zoo Madrid in Spain and the San Diego Zoo in the United States on a new round of cooperation in giant panda protection. Now this is quite symbolic. A, because China is making a U-turn. Last year, Chinese social media accused the U.S. of mistreating pandas. But one year on, Beijing is sending more. And B, because Americans are obsessed with pandas. We saw that in November last year. Two giant pandas were leaving the Washington Zoo. Their farewell was quite emotional. Once we heard that they were going back to China, we knew that we had to bring her here to see them. I'm Are sad to see them go. go oh, yeah. I want to miss them and I want to hug them. Who knows if they'll be back? <laughs> Now we come to the politics. Pandas have played a key role in the U.S.-China relationship. It dates back to 1972. That's when U.S. President Richard Nixon visited China. He met Mao Zedong, buried the hatchet, and got pandas in return. So in 1972, these bears signaled a reset, a new chapter in U.S.-China relations. Is 2024 going to be the same? Well, yes and no. The relations are a lot better than during the pandemic. Back then, it was daily abuse. They couldn't agree on anything. But in the last few months, we've seen a change. A lot of top U.S. officials travel to Beijing. Treasury Chief Janet Yellen, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, and Secretary of State Antony Blinken. That set the stage for the big meeting. Xi Jinping visited the U.S. for the first time in six years. He also held talks with Joe Biden. Nothing big came out of those conversations, but the idea itself was welcome. Keep talking to each other. I guess the question is, why? Xi Jinping is not about to abandon his global ambitions, nor will the U.S. give up its position. So why are they taking a step back? A couple of reasons. Number one, financial stress. China's economy has had a bad couple of years. Growth is sluggish, youth unemployment is high, and investor confidence is low. So Beijing needs time to build things back. The U.S. too struggled financially. Their inflation reached a 40-year high in 2022. So Joe Biden needed a breather. He was already dealing with a war in Ukraine. The last thing he wanted was a conflict in Asia. Reason number two, a number of cl close calls. The first one was in January last year. A Chinese spy balloon was spotted over American skies. The U.S. eventually shot it down. The second was in June. A Chinese warship cut across an American destroyer. It was a dangerous and risky maneuver. The third incident was in October. A Chinese fighter jet flew very close to a U.S. bomber. Again, a risky maneuver. So both sides asked the same question. What if these close calls escalate into something more? What if there is miscommunication? It would be deadly for both sides. And finally, number three, self-interest. The U.S. and China are deeply interconnected. Their economies, their industrial base, their markets, everything is closely linked. So clean divorce would be ugly for both sides, which is why the U.S. won't decouple from China. They will only de-risk. It's all about self-interest. I think we brought greater stability to the relationship, uh, not uh, moving away from or ignoring the fact that, yes, we have a competition. 
There are areas where we are contesting each other, but there are also areas where we can and should cooperate because it's in our interest uh, to do that. China will firmly safeguard its legitimate rights and interests and act in a sense of responsibility for the history, for the people and for the world to work with the U.S. side to implement the common understandings between the two presidents and move the bilateral relations forward along the right path of mutual respect, peaceful coexistence and win-win cooperation. In the short term, this is good. We're talking about two of the biggest economies in the world, also the two biggest militaries. So we need them to work together. But what about the long term? I wouldn't bet on it. The U.S. is still focused on containing China and the South China Sea, and Beijing is still intent on poking American allies, on land grabs and expansionism. These differences may never disappear. For example, the U.S. will soon have five aircraft carriers in the Western Pacific. It's an unprecedented deployment. It definitely doesn't signal a backward step from the U.S., so all this panda diplomacy is about the next best thing, about laying ground rules of engagement, about competing and not fighting. But to do that, you need political maturity, not the strong suit of China or the US. So this reset is on shaky ground. As the world feels the shock of wars, India stands as a beacon of strength. The first post-Defense Summit 2024 will showcase cutting-edge technologies, forging partnerships between industry, academia, and research organizations. Witness the transformative story of India's defense sector. First Post Defense Summit 2024.